we are living in history. This is not an age in which nothing is happening, but in which lots of things are happening and are happening very quickly and changes are going on all the time. In the space of days, we were asked to avoid cafes, restaurants and bars, and then they were closed. We were asked to distance ourselves socially from others. And then we were asked to stay at home and only go out for essential things. Some of us are working harder than ever to the point of exhaustion. And others are wondering what to do with themselves. The virus was being tracked and then monitored, tested for, research is being done, the numbers of new infections began to rise, rise more steeply, followed by the numbers of deaths. It all seems overwhelming. When will it be safe to go out again? And what will society look like when we do come out? Will we continue to keep apart? Have we shaken our last hand? When will we get back to church? And who will be there when we do get back? How will we say our goodbyes to those we love? Will our society, our church, our worship be the same at the end of this? And how will we know it's the end? In the midst of all these questions, we need to care for ourselves by finding a place of calm within ourselves. We need to look at the discussions and the questions with wisdom, not with fear. It's good to have strategies for when things might happen. But we need to leave with God what we cannot change. Psalm 46 speaks of war and tumult but it begins and ends with trust in God. It doesn't minimize fears, it doesn't downplay them, it doesn't say that everything will be all right. It faces what is happening, but says that God is greater. Here is Psalm 46 in the New Revised Standard Version. God is our refuge and our strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come. Behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Before we look at what's wrong, before we look at what's troubling us, we start in this psalm with what's right. God is with us and we can hold on to God in our situation. Whatever happens, God is here. 
then we look at what we fear might happen. The earth could change, the mountains could shake, the seas could roar and foam, and the mountains might tremble. The psalmist doesn't deny that such things might happen, but he puts his trust in God to be with him. He sees God's habitation as a place of safety in the midst of the chaos that is going on all around. He looks at what God has done in the past and tells himself to be still, to know the truth, that God who is exalted in all the earth is with him. And if God is with him, he will be able to face what comes. The psalmist sees the city of God as the place where God dwells. We believe that by the Holy Spirit, God dwells in our hearts. He is with us at the centre of all that goes on. He is with us in the eye of the storm, that calm place in the middle of all that is happening. So how can we be still ourselves? How can we stop the anxious thoughts from plaguing us? As you will well know, especially if you lie awake at night with thoughts going around and around and around in your head, it's very hard to stop thinking it's impossible. The harder we push our thoughts away from us, the harder they push back at us. The answer is to stop pushing. Instead, as the psalmist did, first recognise the truth that God is with you. Then acknowledge your thoughts and take them to God. Tell God that you are worried about your family and your loved ones. That you fear running out of food and supplies that you are lonely and bored and don't know how much longer you can go on alone, that you wonder when you will next speak to someone face to face, let alone hug them. Having acknowledged those thoughts, hand them over to God. And then be still. Bring your thoughts from that place of fear to where you are now in this moment. Think about your breathing. Don't change it. Just be aware of it. Watch yourself breathing in and out. Feel the breath enter and leave your body. See how well it works, this breathing in and out. Your anxious thoughts will try to resurface through this breathing, but just keep on handing them over to God and come back to thinking about your breath. The word that we use for the spirit can also be translated as wind or breath. And here you are, breathing. Breathing the spirit in. Breathing your fears out. Connecting with God in silence and stillness. Breathe like this for 10 minutes. You will be distracted. You may even find that you've got up and wandered off to do something else without realising what you're doing. We are not naturally good at being mindful, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that you keep coming back. And as the day goes on and as fear surface, just keep coming back to your breathing, to your knowing that God is in the midst of us. 
is in the center of you. Breathe out your fears and breathe in his stillness and calm. Whatever happens, God is with us and will be our refuge, our place of safety and our strength, helping us to cope. We just need to be aware of him and receive what he wants to give. Remember that there are people out there that you can phone if you are worried and anxious. Whether it's your pastoral visitor or one of the ministers, the number is on our website. Keep on trying to be calm and breathe, to ask for help when you need it, to know that God is with you and that there are others around you who love and care for you. And may God bless and keep you. Amen.